Hey, Inspire Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers. So John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Inspired live stream. It is Friday, March 22nd, 2024. We're healthy, we're wealthy, we're whole, we're free. And today we're going to dive into a subject with a special guest that uh, is sort of everywhere. Um, for some people, it's just, oh, there's just another big distraction and false flag event. And for others, they're really paying attention to, hold on. There's a lot of symbology. There's a lot of different things, strange things going on. Of course, we're talking about the April 8 eclipse. We had General Holt on last week, and we talked about the strange overreaction by the local and state governments, states of emergency, disaster declarations, just things that haven't happened with previous eclipses. And, um, and so today we wanted to show a bigger perspective, greater symbology, greater meaning, are all these things coincidences? Is it pointing to something? Should we expect a huge event? What will actually happen? Let's look into it with our dear friend and star astrologer, George H. Lewis. George, thank you so much for joining us again today. Yeah, it's really great to be back with you, John, and with all your wonderful listeners, a great family you've gathered over the years. Oh, uh, you're so spot on with that. They are an amazing audience that we love so much. Um, George. You texted us a couple days ago, Christina and I said, you know, um, I really think we should look at this from, 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 you know, the perspective that I have as an astrologer. But beyond that, um, this April 8 event, it, it has significance, right? And so yeah. oftentimes with these events that gather so much attention and, and attract so much mass attention, there are other things happening in the background. Certain groups are using such mass attention events for their purposes. Let's look at all these perspectives. What sticks out for you the most? What, what other than, of course, the solar eclipse itself, um, what is this event really, and what does it mean from an astrological standpoint? I, th I think really when you pull it back or you go up to that eagle's perch of looking down on the collective, it's really about disclosure and learning much more about who we really are and what our belief systems are. I, I'll frame it really with what, we've discussed in previous shows is the Pluto in Aquarius. I mean, Pluto moved into Aquarius this year and it, and it really gets going after around the time of the election, actually. And, and, it, and it will stay there for 20 years. And the last time it was there was the, um, you know, revolutionary wars and uh, the French Revolution, things like that. And so it's a sense of, we're at a really seminal point in our evolutionary history. This eclipse is much more potent than others because it's just on a physical level, the totality is four and a half minutes long. I mean, normally, you know, a lot of eclipses are around two, two and a half minutes. So it's double the length. Um, it also symbolically starts, you know, in Jonah, Texas, near San Antonio. And then it makes a cross in the middle because that, what, what we have to do, we have to look at the eclipse cycle of the one in 2017. You know, it's so interesting with the election of, of Mr. Trump in late 2016 and then, you know, him being inaugurated in 2017. For me, that was a very important moment of a timeline shift in humanity. Uh, that's how I have always seen it. And I see um, that 17th letter of the alphabet, Q, being part of the digital awakening process that we, the people, can delve into, like people like yourselves to awaken ourselves to consciousness towards truth because at the end of the day i sit here with you and we've become dear friends over the last few years if we got to know each other and i and i feel at the end of the day i'm just here trying to uncover more truth i don't sit here ever saying i have the answer so what i seek to share with you today is just some research i've gathered and of course i've put together much stuff from many other people and that's part of the open source new world that we're trying to create that the civilization is based on all our multiple unique individual talents which form the collective you know so when i look at this uh, astrology of, of of this um great eclipse on april the 8th it's a massive conjunction of aries energy and people hopefully some of your listeners know a little bit about the archetypes of of the planets well aries ruled by mars aries is the venal equinox it's the beginnings it's the initiation it really represents freedom. It really represents the sovereignty. And for me, it's radical self-sovereignty, a very American concept. 
uh, not a European one. You know, one that is founded in this great constitution of ours that has been sidelined and whittled down and almost deliberately negated over successive decades. And now we're beginning to reconnect with it. And as an Englishman who's become an American, which is really part of the whole journey of all of us Americans, we choose to live here. We're not necessarily, we, of course, we can be born here and the president has to be born here according to the constitution. But we choose to come here because we choose another way. We choose a way that actually seeks the broad uplands of humanity, the potentiality for the divine conscious to flow through the human form and to connect in a way that other cultures in the historical timeline that we know over the last 2000 years, forget Atlantean and before that, Lemuria and Tartaria, we are able to, to, to do something, punch above, above our weight. So this eclipse for me is a culmination and I can get into that uh, in a little bit on some of the symbology, if you'd like. Actually, um, that was going to be my next question. There's some interesting symbology that some of us have, you know, just seen when you see those uh, paths, you know, the, the total eclipse path of 2017 and you see the 2024. And then uh, you pointed out it, it looks like the Starlink logo. It looks like, you know, it's it's the X. Um, and, you know, sort of it's interesting that in the last few years, all these significant events seem to be tying back or, or let's say Elon Musk in some ways inserting himself into the picture. A guy must have great uh, foresight or a wonderful AI that just looks into everything for him. I don't know, but it's interesting. What do you make of that? What, what, what does the X mean for you? Why is it so significant? And what other symbology is there that we should pay attention to? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, um, I mean, let's just go through it. It's fascinating how much of America might mirror, you know, according to the biblical text, uh, you know, Nineveh. You know, the eclipse actually goes over seven cities in America called Nineveh. And the previous eight, eclipse... Eight, if you count Canada. Right, okay. No, and I like that. I like that because Canada is going to be part of, I, I'm a, I mean, we can get on to what I consider the Americas in a minute. We do. The condor representing the yin of the south and the eagle of the north, including Mexico and Canada. I like that very much. That's very progressive in the sense of um, the, the new age of enlightenment and potentiality. But I'll stick to the sevens, if I may, just for the moment. Sure. We we're still working within the continental uh, framework of still nation states. And seven is a very sacred number. We have seven Salem, the Salem short for Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you know, the city of peace. And then we have Nineveh. And, and so in a way, you know, Nineveh, Texas, Nineveh, Missouri, Nineveh, Indiana, and so on. Um, I mean, it's interesting with, I, I think I suggest the capital, the new capital, but the X marks the point where the 2020, 2017 and 2024 solar eclipses come over actually that x is the spot it's at 307 p.m three plus seven is ten that means one new beginnings maybe the new capital will be in that place is it um i always forget is it nineveh ohio or um the one before that i i, I can't remember where it, it, actually nineveh missouri i think it is where the crossover is sorry in carbondale and so we, we looking at the numerology we may see um a, a new a new city formed there in the new republic who knows but what's interesting, the 8th of April, the eclipse ties in with the Eagle Condor prophecy, as I mentioned, about the coming together of the Americas. And for me, that's very Aquarian, the age of Aquarius. It is the individual being venerated within the collective consciousness and really power coming back to we the people. Now, the negative side of Aquarius energy, we all know that, is the interference and the addiction of AI, which is that satanic infiltration from without coming down to control us. And of course, many of us have got addicted, you know, because it's only been working for us, you know, these smartphones for the last 10, 15 years. And we have to learn to pull back, to reconnect to nature. So there's a whole sense of the, the, the spiritual protocol that we have to practice in order to find balance. But this total eclipse is interesting because you've got, this is what I wanted to share with you today. You've got the paths that uh, go over Salem, and which is Jerusalem. You've got the ones that go over, um, uh, Nineveh, but then what you've also got is December 14th, 2020, which is the halfway point, what we in astrology call the midpoint between those two eclipses. Now, the total solar eclipse passed over South America on December 14th, 2020, Chile and Argentina specifically. And what was interesting about that time, um, it was the halfway point, December 14th, 2020, and it was 1,211 days 
So that's between the two isometric projections of 2,422 days. So you're combining two eclipses in the Northern Hemisphere crossing the nation, and we have this combination of concepts, sail and peace, seven times, and then, you know, starting with Jonah, representing the dove, and we all know the story of Jonah going to Nineveh, and obviously originally getting swallowed by the whale because he refused to go to Nineveh, and then what he did, he saved Nineveh because they listened to him, and, and destruction is delayed. Okay. So so just to, to uh, just quickly, not everybody knows the story, so it's about um, the, the you know, basically... Uh, a, a, a city that has lost or a kingdom that has lost its ways, uh, immoral, um, you know, everything that's everything that we see in the world today, sort of the Babylonian principle. And then Jonah comes and is sent by God um, mm -hmm. to save the city, to make them repent and change their ways. Yeah. And they and they do listen. And for generations, they're fine. Later on, it's being destroyed. But but, but this is the, the, the quintessential story of Nineveh. Yeah, and so for me, I, this is where I'm an, not only an apologist, I'm a great champion of the American people because the American people have been systematically brutalized by system, by air, land and sea. Let me give you an example. By the spraying of the chemtrails up there, by the pollution of the water supply, by the absolute, I speak now as a European, the absolute disgusting infiltration of what they call food into the food supply. I mean, most human beings in America have not had a chance and their obesity, yes, some people are lazy, fair enough, but most of the time it's absolute, uh, deliberate, um, uh, objective uh, attack on the human. And so for me, this whole sense of the promised land of the United States um, can be reactivated, reinvigorated and taken to a level that it wasn't able to succeed in this last Pluto cycle. And I can go into why, we've discussed before, you know, the introduction of the, of, of, of the corporation of the United States in 1871, the Federal Reserve iteration one, two, three, constant, constant barrage of attack from without, infiltration from without, absolute attack on the constitution and on the way of life. And I think this solar eclipse is, is the defining point of learning that disclosure and starting the new, call it the Second Republic. And I think Russia's involved, India, I think that uh, this is a global phenomenon. But what I wanted to share with you was, you know, with the, with, with the, the juju, the jibbity jab. And that is so interesting in December 14th, 2020, which is the, the, juice. Halfway, the juice, the halfway house between these two eclipses. Well, you know, that Maxine uh, was made available on that very, very day in Chesterfield, Missouri, you know, at the, at the wiser uh, facility. So, you know, also at, on, on that day, uh, you know, the Electoral College elects that faux president, you know, total fraud, and we're already on the third or fourth iteration whatever that means. And uh, it also that day, DT refused to concede the election because he didn't lose, it was stolen. You know, it is what it is. And here's the point, and your listeners know this better than anyone, is uh, we're coming to terms with that. We're learning that. And the solar eclipse is a culmination. It's a nine if you add it up in numerology. It's the end of an era. It's, it really starts the new era off. These broad uplands of the age of Aquarius, a thousand years of peace and beyond, I feel is is very much in the grasp for us, we the people. George, I, I want to get fascinating uh, coincidences. And by the way, the word coincidence doesn't mean what it seems to mean at all. If something's coincide, it actually means they're aligned. Uh, you know, they're they're meeting points. What does the Nineveh thing mean to you? Because this is a, a big deal has been made out of this. And well, well sort of with it, what my problem with this is is that you know such dates and events are always super hyped. And then nothing happens. And that's never the case. It's not that nothing happens. Sometimes things just happen on a different level that we might not see. Right. It's not like a big explosion. But what does that mean to you? Because that's what a lot of people have focused on. Yeah, I mean, firstly, let's just talk coincidences. Too many coincidences exhibit no coincidence at all. You're absolutely right. Um, I, I'm developing, and I say this in the sense of process, I'm developing a fresher, I feel lighter with this perspective that it's not what I'm a heavy Bible reader, but I'm very curious by holy text generally. And I'm coming to believe that so much of the programming is within the Bible itself. And part of the freedom of this age of Aquarius is taking salient points from it that resonate from that love frequency. But the stuff that keeps us in fear, the stuff that keeps us within that negative eight, which is the loop, because I mean, learned this from David Icke, eight actually is a Saturn number. 
it's 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 the Lord of the Rings because what it does it keeps us in the louche it keeps us in the reincarnation cycle and ultimately the high vibration of Saturn is the eternal connection to the divine matrix and that requires us to come out of our narrow perceptive perceptual reality and break free think of the allegory of the cave by Plato and so uh, so for me Nineveh actually represents the negative eight because it is a continuation of the psychology and the mythology of us escaping from that but then still being controlled by that I mean the Jews and the Christians in particular and the Muslims all the revealed religions but the Jews and the Christians are going to have to really revisit um, their spirituality because in some ways a lot of the symbology and essence of Judaism and Christianity comes from Babylonia and the Assyrians and that is doesn't really serve humanity now in the 21st century as we go into our galactic and we reconnect to the, the, the galactic federation and, and 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 really we reconnect with um, other entities beyond what we understand to be our terrestrial I mean non-terrestrial can mean many things it can be people underground other civilizations beyond you know let's discuss Antarctica being open to a much bigger conversation and I find freedom there I find freedom being able to be the child, to be able to ask more questions and have answers. And next year, I will hopefully have more information to share because I put together more of the puzzle because it's part of our journey life is to unpack and to try and discover ourselves through this puzzle, to, to decipher. It's, you know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, we're, we're just approaching a, a big uh, Christian, holiday, Christian holiday, Easter. It's not a Christian holiday at all, actually, other than how it was tied to the Christian story, Jesus Christ, and all of that, but but truly the the rituals, <laughs> the customs of Easter, uh, are non-Christian whatsoever. They 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 go back thousands of years in different cultures, borrowed, combined, perverted in some ways. It's always interesting to me how, when you look at it, and we just follow the facts, right? We don't. If you leave the belief system out, and you can, you can you can be in a relationship with Christ, and at the same time see the contradictions of the story that humans made up. And I think that's probably the most important piece here. You can have that relationship and uh, look at the contradictions. So uh, what you just said to me is important because the, the, the basically the concept of truth supersedes everything else. If, if truth shows us something, we need to follow that and not the belief system of before. Um, I, I want to, before we dive deeper into the astrology of the I want to get your reaction on um, something that the general that was General Holt, our dear friend that was here last week, reacted to sort of this strange uh, set of actions that the local and state governments um, have shown, you know, a, a disaster declaration for this April 8 event, uh, states of emergency, executive orders, the media sort of telling people to stock up and is it is it just a hype a media thing or do you see something bigger or maybe even a a, a false flag potential during the eclipse I, I i see it all potentially and i'm very calm about it because it has to play out the darkness has to reveal all its cards and in some ways you see since the timeline change of 2016 2017 because, you know, Hillary didn't write a failure speech. We all know that. What does that mean? It means is they've had to play catch up because they're not winning like they used to. So they're going to have to use the corrupt legacy media in a way to keep humans in that loose frequency of fear. It doesn't mean that they won't be able to achieve a false flag or two. I, again, stay very positive that this has to play out to awaken more and more people. Why? To avert the civil war, which has basically been averted now. I mean, I've met quite a few people who would call themselves liberals, who really have realized that something really desperate is going on. And to me, that's just a good sign, you know. Um, and so the eclipse, there's going to be much speculation. People are going to have different views. I feel it's about reconnecting to our galactic heritage, our human heritage, I mean, I'm going to experience the eclipse, for the full totality. I'm driving five, 500, 600 miles from, from New York City to, to be with some friends. And it's going to be a, a great experience. And what happens will happen. Um, you know, some people speculate we'll have the red moon, we'll have a polar shift. I, I, I don't believe that. I, I'm open to it. 
but I, I, I believe um, it's actually, there's going to be disturbance, but it's positive because it's awakening us to our potentiality. We've all been known, somewhat, I don't want to say zombified, but we've all been under the spell of, and this is the Neptunian side, unfortunately, at the age of Pisces. Um, I'll share this with you. I don't think I've ever shared it before, but I feel it's relevant. I used to do quite a lot of breath work. And I remember one time I was at a place called Kripalu, which is upstate New York, or it's in Massachusetts, I forget exactly where. And I was with Stanislav Graf, and he, he's one of the great breath workers, holotropic breath workers. I mean, he's in his 80s, 90s now, amazing man. It was one of his last retreats he did with Jessica Dib, and, and I got to know them a bit. And I had a, a very unique experience. I, I kind of all but levitated um, off the floor. I think my bottom still stayed on the floor, but literally the rest of my body was up and it was, it was effortless. And I had this vision or I had this, I, and I was, I, that, it was actually before I started to get into astrology. So it must've been 12 years ago. And I was on Pluto <laughs> and I was looking at the solar system and planet earth. And it was such a clear image of understanding. And I've never really had this since is the age of Pisces from which we are emerging has been totally deceptive has been totally an inversion of our truth. Every single one of us, you know, yes, they're the likes of Alex Collier, David Icke, who've been awake to this for decades and decades, but still we all had our, have had our process of understanding that we've been in this perceptual matrix. It's taken me a long time to read this. I would not have been on your channel four or five years. I had nothing to say. You know, it's a process. And so I think, you know, uh, this is the awakening. This is the solar eclipse. It's in Aries again. I mean, conjunct Chiron and Eris. I mean, I can get into the mythology of the Trojan War if you want. Eris, you know, she's the sister of Mars, for goodness sake. She's not invited to the party. You know, she's the goddess of discord and strife. You know, and, and, and Male Maleficent in Disney writes about her, you know, and, and, and she throws down the apple. And of course, Paris takes the apple because, and, and, and chooses Aphrodite and uh, chooses, um, you know, love. But the point that starts the Trojan War. But the point is, is this is claiming power back because Eris really represents radical self-sovereignty and standing up for yourself, irrespective of the consequences. And you have Chiron, the wounded healer, the healer conjunct is we are learning to become spiritual beings. We're learning to reconnect to our spiritual heritage as above, so below, so within, so without, that we are mirrors of the divine coded matrix from above. And, 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 and to me, that's part of what's happening now, is it coincides with the solar maximum. It coincides with not just the new moon conjunct Chiron and Eris, which will weaken this artificial matrix grid, but it's also, which, you know, has been set up with the EMFs and Wi-Fi satellites. And, and Mr. Elon Musk, whoever he is, and I think we've had a switcheroo with him like we've had with so many people, and none of us know fully, um, but we are going to reconnect with the Earth's natural matrix, and that's what's so exciting. We're going to return to 432 as opposed to 440. This is spiritual freedom, connection, as opposed to religious control. This is Jupiter taking over from Saturn. Saturn, Satan control, Jupiter expansion with that Venus quality of love. George, you know, as you know, we're we're humans and we have everyday lives. We have everyday things to take care of. You do, I do. You know, we, we go deep into these concepts and then we have to go and get gas for our trucks and whatnot. So there's these polarities here that are working together. So last time we spoke on the air uh, in December of 23, you said um, 2024 will be the year of the reckoning. And it's it's March 22nd. So the year's fairly young. And we've seen, I mean, just amazing it's a decade or two decades in those first three months that have had unfolded or more it's unlike anything i've ever experienced including the 2020 and 21 era what do you see beyond the, the eclipse for the rest of the year I, you know I, I think generally we all feel it's going to be a roller coaster ride regardless uh collectively speaking but what do you see specifically what do you think some of the milestones will be for this year uh for the human family yeah, I mean, I, I, I think disclosure is happening super fast. And of course, one can... You say alien, disclosure of other species? Is that what you're referring to? Well, disclosure of everything. So disclosure, okay. let's, let's take, for example, a really practical thing, which a lot of, you know, real practical Earth archetypes can get into, is, is the creature of Jekyll Island. Understanding the creation of the third Federal Reserve. Because that's what's held us in the perceptual false matrix through the economic magic. Yes, the economic magic. Read the book, The Creature of Magic. Jekyll Island. 
it, it's unbelievable. I mean, I listen to it on audio because I travel so much. Um, and so you've got that. You've got disclosure with, um, you know, I mean, I, I go to the Galactic Conference and, you know, that's not my absolute wheelhouse, but I've had experiences and I'm fascinated to learn more about the bigger picture. I mean, it's happening in every sphere, understanding music frequency in the spiritual sphere, under, allowing astrology to open up to much bigger archetypes, the archetype shift. Neptune is no longer that angry god Poseidon. Neptune is dissolving. Uh, it's 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 very the Neptunian archetype is mystical on the one level, Christ consciousness on one level, but also addiction, suicide on the other. We're always updating our archetypes as we evolve. So what do I see in 24? It's a culmination year. Two plus two plus four is eight. It is a Saturn year in that sense. It's dissolving the matrix. And it's going it's going to dissolve quicker and quicker the more people understand that we've been conned, we've been tricked. And there's so many examples of this. I mean, we could go through. I mean, I remember years, a few years ago, learning about Rothschild Island down in Antarctica and the next two islands next door to it are Omricon and Delta, you know, and then understanding the symbology of the number of days of 1776 between the announcement of the death of the Queen of England and the announcement of Prince Philip. And so it goes on, you know, coincidences, too many, they exhibit no coincidence at all. Once we all come into that understanding and take a deep breath and say, okay, we're all in this together, we can collapse it can create the, the perfect, the, the better world. I, I don't know what perfect means, but certainly a world that serves us and our empathy and our joy and our creativity in a way that hasn't been experienced on this planet for such a long time that we've collectively forgotten it. That's the amnesia. And it's time to reconnect with that through the spiritual process. And these eclipses are monumental. So this one in particular in Aries is a time of great reckoning for that, of, of opening up the opportunity, you know, the passion for the truth to come forward. It's interesting what you just said. We are the more that we are individually deprogramming from this matrix and from our addiction to it and, and whatnot, and the more that we're spiritually connecting, the easier it is for us to see certain things, see the truth, see the patterns. Like you just said, the uh, numero, numerological patterns that we can observe and and the you know like a distance between two dates and how that replicates and replicates and how the symbology plays into it and how you can find perfect mathematical patterns between seemingly, uh, you know, um, coincidental events like a death or whatever. Yeah. And then you go, it's a perfectly curated reality, this matrix. But I mean, it, yeah. here's my question, George. What happens when the grid, when the grid starts to weaken of this curation? Um, what, what, what do you think will we see more of? Because that's what I think what we're observing is the more that we energetically interfere with it, positive in our from our uh, point of view, the more this grid weakens and the more uh, of these glitches we see. You know, are we looking at ten more years, five more years, twenty years? What does astrology say about this grid? This grid really falling and sort of like prime Earth, prime reality returning. Well, I definitely say the the Pluto cycle in Aquarius through to 2042 is a really critical period of how we spend our time shifting our belief system because none of this can happen overnight even for you and me we ha we no. have to take the information live with it because we still have to get the gas as you say we still have to live in this earth which it can be very very beautiful when it's allowed to be and and so for me the excitement is the reconstruction and um, we're looking at Marshall Plan exponentially in a way that's unprecedented in the sense of setting up healing centers, uh, teaching radical, um, you know, with an open source connection, uh, all frequency, think Rife, think Tesla, uh, opportunities to have access to new, real medical stuff rather than pseudo um, um, uh, petro medical, which is really, um, you know, treating rather than curing. You know, I mean, I don't know, we live in this construct, you know, evidence of its artificiality now is bubbling up everywhere. Um, actually, I was looking back uh, before talking to you today at December 18, 11, 18, 12, and that big eclipse, what happened there? And that just foreshadowed the 1812 war where the British tried again to invade and they burnt the White House down and, and they sacked DC. And then what happened after that, you see, in successive decades and the Civil War really cemented this, was the introduction of the corporation of the United States and, and the control system from without. And so part of the breaking of the matrix is for Americans to understand what sovereignty is and how we haven't, and I speak as an American here, don't get confused by the accent, we haven't been self-sovereign and free. You did, see? You, 
Did you see that clip by General Milley? No, I didn't. Well, General Milley was in, you know, it's it's an election year, so you have a lot of these show trials, these these, oh, yeah. these, these house committees don't really mean anything, but of course it was televised. And so General Milley was asked whether uh, the committee deserved or has the right to receive certain documents as it, as it pertains to the withdrawal from Afghanistan and, and all that. And he basically said, of course you do. You are the board of directors of the corporation of the corporation called the American government. You just uh, go, and, and people are just, you know, just like, oh, yeah, you know, figure of speech. No, 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 no. Come yeah. on. This is the former uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs yeah. of Staff. This is the highest military position you're ever going to attain. So <laughs> you don't say things in that position yeah. that so, you don't want to say. So I, I may be accused of being naive here, and I don't mind this. I feel in my heart that this is constant soft disclosure, uh, that that man had to say that at some point. And, it, and, and and here's the trickle effect. Then people like yourselves and many other digital soldiers get it and run with it. And consciousness bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. And then we fast forward two, three years on, the consciousness is in a totally different place. And when that consciousness is in a different place, I now I'm going to answer your question. When that perceptual matrix, I'm looking out of the blue sky for once, no chemtrails here today in your unusual, uh, suddenly, what do we start to see up there or down there or next door to us? We start to see different things. And many of us have had these times when our toroidal field, which comes from the heart chakra, opens in a way that allows perceptual reality to ex expand the frequency. And again, Ike speaks very clearly about that in his book, The Trap and the Dream. And we suddenly start to see into other dimensions because we have the ability to do that when we're not in the fear-based frequency. And that's when the ant people, that's when the Palladians, that's when, it doesn't matter, the spirits, grandmother comes back, it doesn't matter, you choose. But suddenly that becomes a reality. How exciting is that? Because suddenly as adults, we catch up with little Johnny who tells us stories when he was four or five about his past lives. And we listen, but then Johnny forgets because we don't remind him. And by the time Johnny's had his Saturn half or Saturn square, you know, Saturn return, certainly it's done. He's forgotten. And we're, we're, we're stuck in that Saturnian perceptual matrix, no more. We're going to suddenly start the law of consistency, keeping up. Johnny's going to tell that story. Sally's going to tell that. And we're just going to have uh, a, an imaginative, and suddenly colors will change too. And I think um, art's going to change. Art is not going to be so dark as it was deliberately done in the 20th century uh, of taking us away from source and, and, and creating it very materialistic. And I'm not just talking money, I'm talking low chakra separation from source, very deliberate, Kazarian infiltration, absolutely. So, so interesting, um, per perhaps, you know, um, the colors won't really change, we'll just be able to see them in their full spectrum again. Uh, you yeah. know, we're, you know, and I, I think we're, th there is this idea that we will transform this world into something else. And maybe, maybe that's that's too too much to shoulder. <laughs> maybe what we really do is elevate our spirits and our consciousness enough so that we dissolve this fake grid and what remains is prime, is real, is authentic, is truthful, is what was always there, just hidden. Our perception was manipulated in that way. I think really... And perhaps that, um, you know, is more attainable and achievable than we will transform the world. Sounds like a big deal to me. No, it's in the world. It's absolutely right. I mean, by changing oneself, does one change the world? So uh, here's the thing. It's back to the homestead. It's back to radical localization, learning to farm, animal husbandry. The United States, along with Russia, is the phoenix out of the ashes. It's um, moving out of guilt. We're not guilty. We we have to reinterpret the texts and we have to realize that guilt complexes uh, that were born in sin is that dungeon programming you know uh, it was it was an infiltration from without of governments and schools and all that to keep us in victim in victimization victimhood and um we we, we have the potentiality to take those christed concepts and run with them in a creative way that christ would be very proud of George, um, I, I, w one more question around the eclipse, um, because that's that's why we got together today. So in the past, when, when eclipses happened, total eclipses, how have spiritual people, spiritually truly connected people, used 
these events? What, you know, what were people focusing on? Was it celebrated? Was there sort of a, a, a deeper spiritual meaning? And how can people on April 8th direct their attention in a positive and in an expansive way? So I think one has to also, because I love mundane astrology. Mundane means global in Latin. You always had the court astrologers of the past working for the kings and queens and of course in the modern times for the princes and the ceos and the church and they've used certain times for positive or negative to to create events absolutely uh, we all know that i think for us we the people try and get together with some friends and family and have a celebration of joy of understanding this human experience as spiritual beings in human body form I mean, I'm going up with the friends to a farm and we're going to eat yummy food and we're going to look at the clips and we're all going to chat around a circle and tell stories. And uh, that's going to be very, I think, very healing. And there's going to be multiple generations there from eight year olds down to eight year olds. And that also, I think, is really important, is, is having those connections intergenerationally, wherever we sit on that. You know, we've all been eight and we'll hopefully all be 80 and a lot more. I mean, that's the other thing in this new earth. We're going to go back to uh, go forward to go back. We're going to be able to live for hundreds of years again. Um, so for, for me, it's my saying, staying in the imagination, staying in the excitement of it. And, it. and whatever happens during this eclipse, enjoy it. But don't go back. Don't go into the fear, because that's the perceptual matrix of the legacy media wanting to keep us unevolving. I mean, that's to me quite logical. Um, and I, I have faith. I'm a man of faith, increasingly so. And I have seen enough of it behind the scenes in the last few years. Um, even if there are entities that seek to stop the light from speaking its truth, um, it's amazing how many people are speaking their truth. And that, to me, says an awful lot that we can fly, we can go off and we can, we can share. Uh, there is a serious shift in consciousness happening on our planet. I, I couldn't agree more with you, George. And, um, you know, the, the, I've now talked to quite a few people that have intensely studied April 8 and everything from, from every different angle. And nobody is fearful, which I think is beautiful, you know, and nobody's falling for the hype of the media and, and whatnot. That's all. That's great. Um, but you just said there's a there's a, a shift in consciousness. And maybe sometimes I'm thinking, well, that might just be my echo chamber. But you're you know, you're sort of um, you, you've just been to Europe. Now you come back and you're you're moving between different spaces, right? Different spaces of culture, different spaces of politics. You you spend a lot of time in the south of, of the United States, which is generally speaking uh, more common sense. And Very also, um, I would say at this point, spiritually more evolved than the north. It's hard to say this as a generalized theme, but you feel it moving through spaces. Currently, you're in the north in the New York area. So how do you experience these you know, movements and, and, and how do you experience going back and forth and, and comparing and contrasting to previous times? Do you see a, a, a betterment, if you will? Yeah, no, it's a really good question, but it's very complex because, I mean, I will be honest, when I went back to Britain for those five and a half weeks over the Christmas New Year period, it was very, it was very difficult for me. I, 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 but it was also very revelatory. I, I realized very clearly that I, I am meant to be living in America. I kind of knew that. All along, I've lived in the United States now for 12 years, but it was a, it was a, it was a, it was like an eclipse for me personally. It was a real revelation that no, my work is as an American, because I mean I have such compassion for my fellow compatriots in Britain. I mean the spraying in the skies is so intense in Britain. It's a very small country. Don't forget, Great Britain can fit in to the size of New York State and Connecticut. Um, so and it's an island, and so the control matrix is much stronger. And you've got something called the BBC which, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know where I go with this because that's not the subject of today's conversation. But you know something, I, I will say this. As, as I've traveled, I've been to, what, 96 countries in my life so far, I think, something like that, over 90, certainly, um, is, is I have a lot of compassion for the individuals and the parts they play. So someone who's been caught up in, in some of the dark stuff of Hollywood, I actually feel rather sorry for them because... Most of the time, they've had no choice. Some have chosen, and that's very different. And I and I am not going to name those people, but uh, some just get caught up. And for me, my attack is more about the system. You see, so the institution of monarchy. You know, in that sense, I am a Republican. But let me be clear what that means: a Republican, not a monarchist. 
I believe in the sacredness and the sovereignty of you, the individual. I don't believe in the level of consciousness that we're at today requires a mon monarch to take control. And, you know, George Washington as an archetype, and yes, the legacy media has done their very best to, again, push all that out and bad, bad, bad. But that man was offered the empire, was offered the kingship. And he said, no, that's an important archetype to look to, to look up to as far as I can be that too. What does that mean? It means you go and serve and then you return to the homestead. So the notion is, if in a new republic, I would want to contribute in my way, probably more ambassadorial rather than um, um, uh, in one place, because that's my archetype. I have a North Node in Sagittarius. But you serve and then you return home to the farm, the family, or whatever it is. And, and that's the human, to me, that feels more logically and naturally human to be connected to nature rather than these mega cities. You know, I was walking around New York City last night with five friends, and it was fascinating. And I got this vision, which isn't the first, I think many people have had it, that I may be visiting New York in about 40 years time, and it will be a vast equivalent of a Disney uh, matrix to see, my gosh, that is how human beings lived at the end of the age of Pisces. Can you imagine in those <laughs> tall, small little boxes, watching something called a telelie vision, and actually believing in that nonsense? Ah, oh, poor them. <laughs> but we must never let it happen again. And so it's almost like a big, big museum this. And I don't see the future of human beings living in mega cities. Uh, I, I don't see it either. Um, there are so many beautiful visions out there now. And I think what you just said so beautifully um, is that it's a journey, not a overnight thing. It's a process. And we are evolving with it and it is evolving through us. So basically, okay, we're not going to just say, hey, we don't need a government anymore. We don't need a system anymore. We don't need anything anymore. We're just completely self-reliant. That wouldn't work for the vast majority of people right now. They haven't done the, the necessary work inside and outside to make that happen. But what you're saying is let's let's continue on that journey. Let's explore who we really are and let's adjust as we go. Yeah. So we're going to need less and less and less of sort of the big parent, the big father, the big mother taking care of us. Is that um, is that synonymous with the age of Aquarius? And how is sovereignty in the age of Aquarius? Well, very much so. I mean, I think it's the radical idea that humans pull back there, giving power away to the father figure. This is Saturn. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's a school system or, or an overarching powerful parent. I mean, I think parental control is vital. Or a president fact. or an overarching or, king or right. president. And so the Phoenix phenomena, you know, in some ways of this Aries archetype, you know, at the moment that we're experiencing right through until, you know, the 20th of, of, of April and beyond in a way, because a lot of these planets will remain in Aries for a while, Aries and, and, and Chiron, is, is, is pulling into our, leaning into our sovereignty and just reestablishing our sense of good boundaries. And if we don't like something, we say no, rather than putting on the face nappy as we did or the face diaper and just, you know, bending over and taking it un unwillingly. It, it's a sense of no, we're going to be sovereign. We're going to actually um, stand up for what we believe and we're going to potentially die doing it potentially uh, and you want to go to extremists here because it's worth living for it i'm prepared I, I will die for it because it's worth living for it because otherwise there's no point in living in a prison you know james o'keefe said a beautiful i don't know if you've seen that little clip and said he was you know what, what's your price is it 10 million is it 20 million and he said if your price isn't your life then <laughs> i don't mess with you I, I can't do with you this is where we're at if, if you're not willing to put your life on the line uh, then, then you're not serious about this. And this is what we both share. It's like, okay, this is the hill that it's okay to die on. If it happens, it happens. That's fine. We, we know it's not the end of the journey anyways, but we're never, ever going to go back to doing um, the wrong thing to fit in or to uh, avoid cons bad consequences. That's never going to happen again. And, and in this way, the awakening is a one-way street. It's a one-way street. Once you are out of or, or awakening from the slumber of the matrix, you never go back. What is um, today, you know, we're, I, I don't, I don't want to take up too much of your time, um, but what would you recommend to people? What is sort of a good practice, both spiritual and physical, to support this journey, to deal with the craziness of the world right now, and to remain balanced and centered? What does that for you, and what do you re recommend to people? 
it's so important. I mean, I do teach this a lot when I do my astrology readings and healings online. And uh, we have to live in these bodies. So, I mean, I'm, I happen to be sitting here with this interview. My next one, I will be standing. And it's constantly about being, mixing it up. Now, every morning I get up and I do a 10, 15 minute protocol. I, I, I love Michael Chang, for example. I follow him and he does this thing where you, you, you twist your spine and it's all down to breath work as well. And then I, I'm always shaking my hands and feet in the morning and I bounce 50, 60, 70 times on my toes. And it really gets that piezoelectric charge going. And I you know, have slightly st stiff hamstrings because I do a lot of driving and, 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 and hips. And we all do it because we sit, sit too much. So we have to reactivate that. And that takes time. Heated saunas, infrared sauna can be useful. There are many different protocols. And of course, we all are deficient in certain minerals. And that's back to the depletion, which is very naturally done through what they've been putting in the soil, whether it's deliberate or, 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 or just careless it doesn't matter it is what it is so we we will at this this stage in our human development need to take extra magnesium potassium at times depending on what your, your diet is and you know certain protocols with vitamin c's and d's it, it can get too complex i mean because i don't think we should be suddenly taking 30 or 40 pills a day but um we have to really get closer to understanding what our bodies need and everybody has a slightly different you know, rhythm in the blood group plays a part in it as well. So getting closer means, um, you know, getting, understanding your body is your temple and we have to eat clean. But I mean, one of the things I'm keen to do is to get the information out there and what that means. I mean, I'm going down to North Carolina in a few days time. I'm helping put, put the, 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 the big vegetable garden in for a friend of mine. And I do that every year. And, you know, she feeds hundreds of people and she's very extensive. She's got 60 chickens. Uh, that's the homestead and that's a great archetype to lean into and we have to become more self -run. we can feed this planet with seven eight billion people easily don't let that matrix tell you that it can only be to final two billion hence the depopulation program absolute nonsense i mean i fed at my old retreat upstate in the catskills and i was at two thousand feet above sea level i fed two or three hundred people during the course of a couple of months for my vegetable garden and my vegetable garden was only you know 15 20 feet long and 15 20 feet wide and think about how much you can produce from that beautiful it's a new way or, or the original way of thinking uh george h lewis uh where can people keep up with what you do uh connect with you get a reading what's the best way to get in touch with you i think probably the website georgehlewis.com is the best way but obviously my instagram is george h lewis my uh, telegram well, my um, Truth Social is George H. Lewis, um, and you can message me from my Telegram and my locals accounts if you get in touch with me through the website. That's the best way. Wonderful. George, thank you so much for your time today, your expertise. It's always an honor to talk to you, sir. Well, the feel feeling's very mutual, and I, I adore being with you, and you have such wonderful soul family, you know, part of your community. Thank you all at Inspire Tribe. You know, we love you. We appreciate you. And we'll be back with you again very, very soon.